welcome back how are you all doing my name is Tabitha from the crafty place to be and today I thought I'd make a video on how to start a cross stitch kit so this is quite an easy thing to do but obviously if you don't know how you're doing it then you don't know how so I thought I'd do a quick video and show you how to actually do start a kit um, I'm going to be doing it on this which I bought the other day or the other week um, and I made a video on this, this is, I got this from Aldi and from Facebook groups that I've seen this is actually quite a popular kit uh, and I wanted to get started on this especially because we're going to be in lockdown now for another couple of months from the looks of it or we can't at least go travelling so the plan is uh, to get this done uh, and stick it in the van so I'm going to start on that and I'll show you how to actually get it up on this too so I'll quickly just open the box and show you what's in it um, I have opened this before on my haul video that I did which was the first video I did um, and I did open it up but I'll quickly do it again for the purpose of this video so we've got some Ada which is obviously what you need to stitch on and I'm not sure what count it is but I'm guessing it's 14 um, I don't know if it says anywhere but 14 is usually um, the most common type of Ada uh, it's not my preferred or my favourite but um, it's alright, it does the job and if you're doing full cross stitches it's absolutely fine it's only when you start getting to like quarter cross stitches and half cross stitches which you probably don't know anything about if you're new to cross stitch um, and I'll make a video about that in the future also in this kit you have oh, it's all tangled up also in this kit we have all your thread and a needle oh, there's, that's looking there that's the uh, little salt air uh, thing um, you have all your thread which has been nicely put into a chart so you can easily pick up the colours and the colours in this are super nice too it's like stitching a rainbow also got your needle as well which more than likely this won't be a great needle um, there's actually a couple here sometimes they're alright uh, but I do find that they break really easily sometimes um, it kind of depends what you get but if you do get like the more expensive ones then they are easier to like thread the um, wool and everything like that so um, these will do for the job but I would normally pull it out and use one of my other needles that I've actually bought myself. Then we have all the framing for this one because this one as you can see in the picture uh, is on a frame uh, and that actually comes with it so that's pretty cool um, which you usually don't get with a kit you usually have to sort that out yourself so that is pretty nice for this one. So this actually, I suppose you'd class as probably a, a big chart, but I tend to like these bigger charts. Um, you can get loads of small kits, and I've done loads of small kits, and I'm currently working on like a, a bare one at the minute, which is quite small, uh, nice to do. But um, this is a chart you get in the kit as well, so as you can see it's quite big, but at the same time the symbols are quite big on it, so it's not too bad. Uh, and you've got four pages of that. Uh, yeah, we've got two sheets of big A3 paper, but it's really easy to see. And you also have on this one is the chart for all the colours. So this might look really daunting because there is like a lot of colours, but honestly, it's not that bad. So one of the first things that you need to do with your Ada is actually unravel it. Now I've got actually got the sewing tape off it. And as you can see, it is actually quite big, because look at the size of that. Usually you should have a lot more fabric than you actually need um, in a good kit. And because this has been rolled up, it's going to be a little bit hard to play with. But the first thing you need to do, well, one of the first things you need to do, and it's best practice to do, and if you read the instructions, most of them tell you this, is to start in the middle. So the best way to do that is fold it in half. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but finding the estimated half is a good practice because you don't want to run out of Ada. That would be a disaster and not something that would be um, nice to happen to you, especially if you spent hours and hours uh, stitching something up and then realising you run out of fabric. So the best practice is to fold it in half and then half again. And then pinch that corner there and that there should be your estimated center part it doesn't have to be perfect like i said but as you can see then on my fabric 
you can see the little nipple sticking out that is the center so that's the first thing then you also need to find the middle of your pattern which i'll quickly show how to do now but before that we'll show you an example of when i haven't actually started in the middle and that was on my big heaven and earth design you can't really see this pattern because all of it is tucked up away in my grime guard but um because i didn't start in the middle of this one because this is a massive piece and i didn't really fancy starting in the middle so what i did was uh, i gridded it up um i will do a video on this in the future but i gridded my fabric first uh, in 10 by 10 squares and then i know from the pattern um i can count i also know that it'll actually fit on this piece as well and leave the I desired gap that I wanted as well. So that was um, why I did that one. So I actually started in the top left. I mean, you can do that um, with like something like this. That's not an issue. It kind of depends what you want to do really. And if you prefer it that way, you can buy gridded Ada as well. I will go through another video about that as well. You can get gridded, um, which is already like pre-gridded for you, um, which will make it a bit easier. But with kits like this, I obviously don't want to buy more Ada so I'll just use this uh, and I won't grid it because I don't really feel like I need to if I had a bigger project like that then I would but apart from that I would stick with just doing the centre part and then working from that point so now onto your chart and this can look quite daunting but actually it's really easy because there's two arrows which is this side is the centre so there's an arrow there and then there'll be an arrow on the other side there and you follow each one down and you'll find your center part which will be somewhere around here so my center point is around here i mean like i said you don't have to be exactly perfect um that's perfectly fine but yeah i'll just put, choose one of these colors here and use that as my center point and start working from there so i'll probably use the dark one which is a dark diamond and i'll go over here and find it on here which will be oh it's not a diamond it's actually a star uh, which will be one of these so you've got two lots of that because there's obviously a lot of that color so i use that one first to start off i'll quickly show you how i do the loop start um i found that a lot easier and it's something that i've only picked up for the last couple of years and it's actually been a game changer for me so i'll quickly show you that um instead of the preferred way of just trying to stitch it in the back so i'll quickly show you that now so something i quickly forgot to mention about the chart is this dark bit here i don't know if you can see it um this here is just a indication that it is a copy of the other side so that you can line it up all right so don't copy that bit and then go over to the other side so that here is the exact same as the other side um and then it'll line up so it just makes it a bit easier to read the chart um, so i just thought to quickly mention that as well because that was something that i actually um forgot to do and i messed up on when i was first starting cross stitch so once you found the middle and pulled out one of your lengths of thread we usually cut it into about a meter length that's what i usually go for and i find that's quite the perfect length to which you cut it to um if they are too big they can like knot up and get in a bit of a pain and stuff um as a lot of you have probably found out um they are sometimes a bit of annoying and if you get a knot in your fabric sometimes you can't get it out and it, then it just kind of yeah it just gets a bit messy so a meter length strips are about the sweet point i usually use my arms and just stretch out and that's when i cut and i found that to be a lot better so um your kit will probably tell you that you'll need two strands of thread uh, i don't do that because if you have any even number amount of thread that you need then you half that so i'm going to pull out one right now and the best way to pull them out is to go all the ends and thread them out pick one and just pull I find that if you try and do two at a time it will not up and the amount of times that I've read I've ruined a whole skin of thread through not a whole skin but a whole length of thread just because it's got knotty is a pain so um, I found that like this length is quite fine and then you half it so this might seem a bit weird right now but I'm quickly going to show you how to do the loop start so you half it like this So now you've got about 50 centimetres, which makes it a lot more manageable as well. Get my needle and then I thread it in a really weird way. I don't know if it's weird, but this is how I thread it. So I wrap my wool around my needle head, pull it off, get it between my thumb, bit of thread, and then get the eye and push it through. And I can thread a needle in literally a couple of seconds. I never have a problem with that and I've been doing that for ages now. 
So that's how I thread my needle. So I found my halfway point, found my colour. Now it's time to put in my first stitch, which is maybe a bit daunting for some of you, but it's actually not that bad. And I'll quickly show that now. So we've marked it on. Oh, this is all falling down. So we've marked it on our Ada where the middle point is. So I'm going to get that now. Sometimes it can be a right pain to work with this amount of fabric, which is why a lot of people use grime guards and um, other hoops which i'll do another video on at some point but i just thought i'd quickly show you how to get started because that's the most important part um, and then you can kind of if you really like it you can invest more money into it but so we found our center point which is here and what you do is you can see you go in from the front so this might seem a bit weird but you're going from the front this is so much easier as well if you're working with stands and things like that um and that's how i actually learn about the loop start and that's how it's a lot easier because if you've got a frame you can't see like at the back where you're actually um sewing in the, the end piece of thread the loose bit so you start pulling it through until you have a little loop on the other side and then you come up the other way up on the diagonal and then you push your then you pull your needle through that loop and then you just go down the same hole you just come up it doesn't really matter which hole and then you'll have a small little knot I wouldn't really say knot but you have a small little loop that sits at the back of your fabric there and it's really easy and it ties it off nicely and it just keeps your back looking a bit lot neater um, I don't really care about the neatness of my back but it, I find it a lot easier I'm wasting less thread and it's a lot easier then to not have to worry about trying to tie it in and then at the end of my thread I would just drag my needle through some other stitches through the back and then give it a chop you don't need to actually do it that far I tend to only go through like three or four stitches and then chop it off and then it, I find that perfectly fine so I hope that's helped you learn how to actually start a cross stitch kit I tried to make it as quick as possible but give you as much information as I possibly could um, and I hope you enjoy actually cross stitching and start to love it as much as I do um, if you like the video and you found it useful please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing that would mean a lot but uh, for this video that's it so uh, I'll see you in the next one